Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It is Thursday, June 14th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. June 14th, it means it is the start of early voting in Maryland. For those that have been living under a rock, we do have an election going on, and the primary election will be held on June 26th. However, we do have early voting at designated areas within the county. If you are an Anne Arundel County resident, you can go to the Odenton Regional Library, the Glen Burnie Regional Library, the Severna Park Community Library, the Pitt Moyer Rec Center in Annapolis, the Edgewater Library, the Crofton Library, or the Anne Arundel County Board of Elections on Bay Meadow Drive in Glen Burnie to cast your vote. Polls will be open daily from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. And you do not need to go to the poll that is closest to you. You can go to one that's close to wherever you work or wherever you happen to be. If you miss early voting, Tuesday the 26th is your date. The other thing is that we have judges running this time around, and we also have school board. Both of those races are nonpartisan, so if you are an independent voter, you will be able to vote as well, which is something unusual for Maryland because we do have closed primaries. However, as an independent voter, you will not have access to help select the Republican or the Democratic candidates that move on. Speaking of local elections, you want to make sure you check out ionanapolis.net. We had interviews with 23 candidates from select races. They released last night at 8 p.m. on the Maryland Crabs podcast. They are consolidated in one post on ionanapolis.net as well as the marylandcrabs.com. Check them out. There are some very interesting ones. And if you want to know a little bit more about some of the candidates, that's a good place to start. And if you want to know about some of the candidates that chose not to respond... That's also a good place to start. Speaking of other candidates, in the governor's race, Valerie Irvin has dropped out of the crowded Democratic field of Maryland gubernatorial candidates and is throwing her support behind frontrunner Rush Sherman Baker. Irvin and her running mate Marisol Johnson made their endorsement yesterday morning in Langley Park with the Prince George's County Executive and his lieutenant governor candidate standing next to them. Irvin, you will remember, ascended to the top of the ticket when her running mate, Kevin Kamenetz, suddenly died in May. Celine Sanfeliz from the Capitol has an article about Anne Arundel County State's Attorney Wes Adams and the accusations from former employees, including his Republican primary opponent, alleging that he is a bully and has created a hostile work environment. Most of the people that were interviewed have been out of that office for the better part of four years. The Capitol says that it was a three-month investigation, which does beg the question, why wasn't this investigation done in 2015, 16, or 17, or even 2018, but done and released the day before voting starts? Up in Odenton, a construction worker died after an electrocution. The Anne Arundel County Fire Department was called to the 1200 block of Annapolis Road at 2 p.m. yesterday, where one person was pronounced dead. They said that the worker was on a scaffolding installing siding on a house that was under construction when he was electrocuted. Resuscitation efforts were unsuccessful. They have not expanded on any of the circumstances, but they have said that they have notified Mosh, Maryland Occupational Safety and Health, for an investigation. And if you have an iPhone, Apple is taking steps to make sure it is even more secure. Apple says that it will block an access point that law enforcement often uses for cracking into iPhones during criminal investigations. The security upgrade, which would disable the lightning port on the bottom edge of the iPhones an hour after users lock their phones. It could reignite the debate over whether the tech companies are doing enough to help authorities probing serious crimes. It would have very little practical effect for most people using iPhones, but would make it far more difficult for law enforcement to use extraction tools that attach through the port for the purposes of collecting the contents of seized phones. 
Apple said that the change protects the private information of iPhone users and was not intended to frustrate law enforcement. Apple has been at the center of such debates since it declined FBI requests to unlock an iPhone 5 used by the gunman in the San Bernardino shooting back in 2015. That's about it for the top news today. Make sure you are checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we are updating it consistently throughout the day. Make sure you get out and vote, whether it is during early voting between now and the 21st or on primary day, which will be the 26th. Be informed. Learn all you can about all of the candidates because they will be representing you on very many different levels for at least the next four years. And because it is Thursday, we've got some other good stuff in store for you. We have Trevor with your Maker Minutes. And of course, we've got George Young with your local and beautiful DMV weather forecast. Hi, I'm Anne Arundel County State's Attorney Wes Adams. The heroin and opioid epidemic has touched every family, including mine. That's why I've teamed up with our county executive, Steve Shu to do something about it. My job is to make sure that the drug dealers who are peddling the slow death of heroin are locked up and off our streets. But there's more to it. We have to stop the cycle of addiction at its source. We have to talk to our children about the dangers of prescription drugs and pay attention to the signs of addiction. Is your child withdrawn? Have you noticed spoons that have gone missing? Or maybe found spoons in odd places with black residue on them? Go to denialisdeadly.org right now or attend one of our Not My Child presentations occurring all around the county. You could save a life. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, June 14th. Today, we'll kick off a stretch of five straight days of great weather for Annapolis and all of Anne Arundel County. And here's what that will look like. Today, sunny and low 80s with breezy winds. Friday, sunny and low to mid 80s. Saturday, sunny and mid 80s. Sunday, Father's Day, sunny and borderline hot with mid 80s to near 90 plus in spots. And Monday will likely be sunny and 90s across the board. It's that time of year, folks. Finally, let the summer games begin. Okay, that's it for us today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there, and be sure to follow us anywhere, anytime, either on our website at dmvweather.com or on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on our app, which you can download for free by searching for DC MDVA Weather in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. But remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Do you know what your teens are doing this summer? Don't be afraid to ask. The most recent Maryland Safe and Supportive School Survey shows three-quarters of Annapolis high school students say it was fairly or very easy for students in their grade to get alcohol. Underage and binge drinking is very real Annapolis. If you give them access to alcohol, you're not cool, but you are liable for the outcome. Create a safe environment for your teens and their friends this summer. If they need to talk, listen. If you need to talk, we'll listen. We're here for you and your children. We're ASAP. Annapolis Substance Abuse Prevention. ASAP facilitates healthy community change, prevents and reduces binge drinking, underage drinking, and alcohol-related auto crashes among youth and young adults through locally-led collaborations and evidence-based prevention strategies. Visit us at PreventSubstanceAbuse.org. This message is supported by SAMHSA and the Maryland Behavioral Health Administration. This is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Sign up is open for Art Farm Annapolis' Summer Art Camps, taught by Reed Gallant, from June 25th to June 29th. There's a morning session for ages 5 to 7 and an afternoon session for children 8 to 11. Now through July 14th is the Mid-Atlantic Regional Watercolor Exhibition at Black Rock Center for the Arts in Germantown, an exhibition of juried watercolor paintings held by the Baltimore Watercolor Society. Saturday in Centerville, Maryland is Drink Maryland, a Maryland Makers Festival featuring local wine, cider, beer, spirits, as well as artisans, artists, farmers, local music, and food on the streets of downtown Centerville. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday in St. Mary's City, is the Race X Maryland Drone Race and Show. Watch professional drone racers from across the U.S. race their drones. Sunday, as well as Wednesday next week, 
Clay Bakers in downtown Annapolis have a fused glass workshop making a turtle platter. Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. at the Broadneck Library is Make Your Own Musical Instrument. And also Wednesday at night at 6 p.m. at the Broadneck Library is Fun with Robots. Tonight at Greenbelt Makerspace is their JavaScript workshop. And Saturday is the Animation Meet. And this coming week, starting on Monday morning, is their Minecraft Summer Camp. Next Thursday morning, super early at 5.30 a.m. at NASA's Wallops Launch Pad, there'll be a rocket launch. The suborbital sounding rocket carrying an educational payload from Rock On. Tuesday night at Annapolis Makerspace is Getting Started with Raspberry Pi featuring me and Subrata. And you can catch me tonight and every Thursday night for Electronics Night at Annapolis Makerspace on Renard Court. I'll be posting links to these events on the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeannapolis.org sometime today. And whether you're making art, sawdust, software, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.